Rhythm changes are a fundamental part of playing jazz music and need to be constantly worked on in order to play it at a high level. In this lesson, I'm going to share with you seven different licks and concepts that will help you master this essential song form. I'm going to start by showing you how these licks and concepts sound in an etude over rhythm changes. Feel free to skip ahead if you want to just jump right to the lesson. As always, you will find the guitar profiles with embedded audio so you can play along with me in real time and all the lesson materials for this etude, including every example written out on my Patreon, which you can find in the video description below. <laughs> Okay, so the first lick you need to play rhythm changes sounds like this. This, as you can hear, is a great blues lick. Blues is an essential part of playing jazz, and rhythm changes is no exception. Most of the time, people try to play every single change in this progression and end up getting discouraged or frustrated. You don't have to do that. The simplest way to play in the A sections of rhythm changes is to think of it all as B flat 7, or rather B flat blues. You'll of course need some good blues language to pull from. Here's another great blues lick that you can use from the legendary guitarist Kenny Burrell. next lick that you need to play rhythm changes sounds like this. Now this is similar to what we did before, but instead of playing everything as a blue sound, we are just going to simplify it to a major sound. The first four bars of rhythm changes are just one, six, two, five repeated, right? are all chords out of the key of B flat major. So why not play the sound of B flat major over all of them? Thinking like this is a common way that jazz musicians handle lots of chords moving really fast. Here is another lick that outlines the major sound that you can use over this section. Very quickly, I'm going to plug my new Patreon tier that I just released. If you're really a fan of how I teach, this would be a great way to dig deeper into that as I post exclusive content chosen by the Patreons of that tier. So our next lick sounds like this. This is another way to simplify all of these chords. And that is by playing off the dominant chord of whatever key you're in. This is just like our last concept, only instead of playing off the one chord of the key like we did before, we are going to be thinking about the five chord of that key. This approach will always work when playing over diatonic chord progressions. Notice that my line is not a alter dominant line, which sounds like this. <laughs> sound is unstable and really wants to pull to its one chord. 
a tonic dominant is rather a dominant sound, which is stable and uses the notes of whatever key that it's diatonic to. You can also mix tonic dominant and major language together over the A sections like this. Notice that the first part is just our major language from before. But then I play our tonic dominant language an octave down and connect it to that line. All right, so our next lick sounds like this. This is, of course, classic jazz 2-5 language, and Rhythm Changes is full of 2-5s. Try playing these short 2-5 style licks right before we move to the 4 chord of this progression. And also over the turnarounds back to 1 at the end of each section. You can also play 2-5 language over the B section, but focus on long 2-5s, which take up two measures instead of one. This works because every dominant chord can also be thought of as a minor chord, specifically its minor 2 chord. So for D7, we could also think about that as a minor 7. You could also even simplify the A sections into long 2 fives as well. Instead of soloing over these chords in the first four bars, Just think about it as two lawn two fives. So it'd be C minor F7, C minor F7. So the next lick sounds like this. This is classic rhythm changes language and uses the concept called a walk-up progression. In this case, our walk-up progression is this. This is a common way to enhance the original progression of rhythm changes for the first couple bars. Not only that, but this lick can be used over a static key center as well. What I mean by this is that if you have just a B flat major chord, for example, you could play this lick over it and it would enhance that sound. You could also play this lick over the B section by thinking of each dominant chord as a key center. For example, the first dominant chord D7 could be thought of as the key center of G. So just play our lick starting on G and it's going to work. The last couple of licks focus on more advanced subs and would only be used if you can clearly play each sound. Our next lick then sounds like this. This is focusing on the diminished sound. Oftentimes players will just play B flat diminished over the first four bars of rhythm changes. This comes from Ben Webster's famous solo on Cottontail. Use this lick to create a building effect to the four chord of this tune. You could also play any ideas within the B flat diminished scale. Or 
use the triads from the diminished scale. Also on the note of diminished chords, players often struggle with the sharp four diminished chord after the four chord in this progression. For this change, you can obviously just play the diminished arpeggio over this, but I want to give you a great line from the legendary trumpet player Lewis Smith that I use all the time for this part, and that one sounds like this. So our last lick sounds like this. This is what is known as cycling dominance used over to the first four bars of rhythm changes. Like the diminished sub, this is used to lead into the four chord. But instead of building up to the four chord like the diminished chord does, this creates a downward feeling that leads to the four chord. To think about this progression, just start on the sharp five of whatever key you're playing rhythm changes in and play dominant chords that resolve into each other every two beats until you hit the four chord. Four chord. You could also solo over this progression by playing the Coltrane pattern, which is just one, two, three, five of every chord to solo over this progression. concepts should give you a great starting point when trying to practice over rhythm changes. As always, there are tons of other ideas that musicians use to solo over this kind of form, and these are a great starting point to lead into those. Be sure to check out the guitar profile and lesson materials on my Patreon page to get the most out of this lesson. I also want to thank the Patreons that support this channel. Without your support, none of this would happen and I am truly grateful, thank you. And as always, thanks so much for watching and remember to always keep swinging.